Hi, I'm Marius from Mways Photography. Welcome back to our third and final video on the FlashQ wireless flash triggering system. Now, so far we've unboxed these units, we've looked at some technical specs as well as how to use them. Now I've created this two light setup with these two speed lights and we'll be taking pictures of these three colored peppers. Now I'm gonna run you through my entire setup, what I've done here as well as the settings so you can see what I'm doing with these um, with the set of flash cue triggers. Okay, now from the background, I'll be using my white projector screen. You can use a white wall, a white piece of material, it really doesn't matter. I'm only using this because I've got it. If you're using material, make sure it doesn't have any creases. That's also why I'm using the projector screen, it doesn't have any creases in there. Just make sure your cloth or material doesn't have creases because otherwise you can see it in the picture. Okay, then our first light, this light's pointing at the back and it's a Nikon SB800 and you can see the flash key receiver right here. Now on top of the flash on the front you can see this green piece of material or this colored gel in the front and it's connected to this strap, velcro strap on the front. Now this is called a gel and you've got different colors of them. So there's green, here's blue, here's red and what this does, maybe you can see it on the video, I'm not sure, you should maybe see the green as I'm firing the flash on the background. Okay, so I can change this, I can shoot blue, I can shoot red with, by changing these. They can become sometimes a little bit pricey, like this is the Honel uh, Photo Professional Series. You can make your own from cellophane. Go to Arts and Crafts store, buy different colors of cellophane, cut them out, put Velcro on the edges and make your own. Okay, so now for the power settings, Obviously I'm powering this flash in manual. The units do not handle TTL, which I'm very happy with. I don't use TTL with off-camera flash. I, or actually, I prefer not to, because I wanna know if this flash, like currently I've got it set to half power. I know every time I'm firing, this flash is going to fire half power. The camera is not doing anything. It's changing by TTL, my settings or my power levels. I know I'm in full control. So I'm happy with it being manual only. Like I said, this is firing half power. I can control the power levels by going up and down there to go full power, quarter power, eighth power. I can decide what my power levels must be. I've chosen half power. On the table, I've got pieces of white paper and then a piece of perspex. Now the perspex will have a nice reflection of the peppers in the perspex of the water there. Now for the water, I'm just using a squirt bottle, squirting on them. It makes them look nice and fresh. So another tip, if you love to do pictures of flowers, um, always keep a water bottle, squirt the flowers. If the sun is shining, you'll see those sun sparkles in your flowers. It looks beautiful and it really enhances the drama in your pictures. So keep that handy as well. Okay, then the next light is that SB910, also a Nikon speed light. And I've also got one of these flash cue receivers below that flash. That flash I've set to the power level to quarter power. Very important when using these color gels is you don't want the two lights to basically hit each other because then you're going to nullify the effect of this. So what happens is there's about a meter and a half distance here. This light is flashing on this. It's going to create my green background which you'll soon see in the pictures. If that white light falls onto the background here, the white will basically kill the green. You won't see the green anymore or it'll be very, very, very subtle green. So that's why I've created some space here so I can have this flash which is set to half power. In other words, it's stronger than that which is at quarter to give me a lot of green light here. And this flash, um, which you'll also see I've got the umbrella there, it's making the light softer on these peppers, is falling right here. So I'm trying to separate the two lights so that we don't run into those type of problems. So if you see that happening, just separate your light so that this light doesn't destroy your color gel effect you're creating. For the camera settings, or for the camera, I'm using the Fuji X-T1, I've turned it on, I'm just gonna focus, we can see the picture there. You can see on the peppers, the reflection below them, it looks pretty cool. And then for my settings, I'm working on manual with the camera, and I've got a shutter speed of 125th, an aperture of F10, and an ISO of 200. Now, the setting size, I'm just the set, settings side, I just quickly wanna discuss, because this is where people who start with, with, with off-camera flash start to make mistakes. Because they want to shoot in aperture priority, shutter priority program, you can't use those modes. You need to work in, in, in manual so you can tell the camera how much ambient light needs to be in your shot and how much 
flash needs to be in your shot because there are two light sources in here. The video lights which are on will be my ambient light. The flashes which I can fire by just pressing the test button here, these are obviously now the flash light source. So there's two light sources. So how do you do the settings for both light sources? Now the magic rule here, and like I said, you need to be in manual, is shutter speed controls ambient light, aperture controls flash power. Shutter speed controls ambient light, aperture controls flash power. Why does it do that? How, wh why does those two settings control those two light sources? Now your ambient light is always on. So if you control your shutter speed, you make it longer or you make it faster, then obviously you're gonna have more light or less light. That's controlling your ambient light. Your flash, when you, when you take a picture, what happens with the flash? Boom, the flash goes off, done. So to control the flash power, you control your aperture. So if you're shooting maybe like very wide open, maybe 2.8, f4, then obviously you're gonna have a very wide open aperture. More of the flash will come into the camera, you will have more flash power. If you're shooting f16, f20, obviously your aperture is much smaller, then you will have less flash power coming into the camera. So there are two ways you can control your flash power. One is either by changing the flashes the power on the flashes. This one is a plus minus going up and down. On that one, you just press the, the setting. There's a button you press, and then you just turn the dial. You can go full power, half power, quarter power, 8, 16, 30 seconds, 64, 128 power. So you can control the power levels there, or you can use the aperture on the camera. So for this specific shot, I don't want to see any ambient light in my picture, so I'm using a shutter speed of 125th as the fastest I can go before I run into problems with sync speeds. Now I'm not going to talk about sync speeds now, it's going to make this video totally too long, but you'll immediately see when it happens on your camera when you're going too fast at the shutter speed, you'll start to see these dark bars on your picture. Remember the camera doesn't know there's a flash that's being fired because this only sends the signal, if I press the button, it just sends the signals to the flashes. The camera doesn't know the flash is going off, so it won't limit your shutter speed to make sure that doesn't happen. So if you go over, usually in most cameras, it's 200th of a second, 250th of a second. If you go faster than that, you're gonna to start to see those bars happening on your picture. Um, if, uh, the faster you go, it basically just covers your entire picture, and it's called your sync speed. So with this camera, I'm using 125th of a second. I know I'm not running into any of those bars on my picture, and it's the fastest I can go to cut out any ambient light in this room. If the flashes don't go off, you don't see anything on a picture, it's just a black um, image because I'm shooting so fast, I'm not picking up the ambient. My aperture is f10, that's controlling the flash power. Okay, so let's take the shots. I'm gonna focus halfway, the camera turns on again. I focus on those peppers. I'm gonna fire those flashes to make sure they are still active. Take the shot, go to preview, and there you can see our peppers with the nice green background. Okay, now I'm gonna take this kryptonite green filter off here, or the colored gel off here, and then I'm gonna take the blue, and I'm gonna put the blue on here. Now just look how quick it is to change between the backgrounds. You don't need different cloths, just change the flash, and you get different colored effects. You can even start to bring in flashes around your picture and start to put uh, cellophane on them and get all these different colored bursts happening all over your picture. You can do some amazing stuff with this. Okay, so next shot. I haven't changed anything. I've only changed the color. So there we've got our blue background. Now here's a very cool tip. On Photoshop you've got the gradient tool and you can change say from one color to another. So I can just take the blue on the flash. This is something I love to do. And I put it only half over the flashlight, and I take, say, the red, put it half over the other side. So now half of my light will be, uh, will be red, other half will be blue, and the two will graduate and meet each other. And this is what it looks like. Focus and shoot. And there we've got our peppers with a graduated background. Okay, so that's all for this series of videos on the Flash Q wireless flash triggering system. I hope you've enjoyed seeing what these trigger, trigger units can do. If you're new to off-camera flash, I hope you feel inspired about this and seeing all the possibilities that you can do by using 
off-camera flashes. Now, if you've enjoyed this series of videos, you want to see more of it, then what are you waiting for? Click that subscribe button and get all these awesome episodes as I release them. And you can also look on my MWS Photography YouTube um, channel. You'll see there's a show called Digital Photography Today, where my goal is to teach you guys how to become the masters of your camera by knowing what is your shutter, how to use it, your aperture, your ISO, your white balance, your flashes. And I explain in those episodes in detail exactly like this, how everything works so you can become the master of your camera. So that's all for this, for this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.